Warning, the following video may contain flashing images. Viewer discretion is advised. Ahoy hoy there folks and welcome back to Put It To TSCT and today we are looking at something slightly different in that we have <gasps> books, books, not just any books, but official Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so those of you who are not familiar with the tabletop role-playing game, where the hell have you been for the last half century? Hello? It's a thing. You know, elves and dragons and dungeons and and more dragons and more halflings with fire and... Yeah, anyway. <clears throat> so yes, uh, tabletop role-playing game, you role-play a character, roll the dice to see if your actions succeed or not, and you basically just... It's a game! It's a game and an adventure all in one, and it's lovely to play with friends. But I'm specifically looking at these, this, this, this series of books called A Young Adventurer's Guide. I mean, it's something that basically I'm looking at, rather than having anyone sort of purchase... Hang on, I should have got this book out earlier. <laughs> so this is your classic player's handbook. Right, this is this is this is this is a big boy. This is a big beastie. This is you're looking at thirty quid to get the player's handbook, which gives you all the in-depth details and stats and hit points and roll dice rolls and how to make character. And it's so deep and in, it's intimidating. A book like this is intimidating. That's the bottom line here. So, with that in mind. Younger people who maybe don't want to read through all of that, or who just want to get in and play the game, they might want a bit of an introduction, rather than seeing that huge great book. Look, this little series, A Young Adventurer's Guide, I feel is a fantastic way to introduce people with uh, limited reading capability or perhaps limited concentration into what Dungeons & Dragons actually is, rather than having to sit through and look through god knows how many pages of utter guff that they don't need to know lots of pretty pictures mind it's lovely but yeah it's it, it's too much for some people and they don't want to know all this um if you're going to dm a game uh and you want to introduce people using these obviously you are going to kind of need at least the player's handbook uh is recommended the Dungeon Master's Guide as well. But that's all you really need, so that's £60 to lay out and you can be a DM for life then using the 5e edition. 5, five edition edition. Clever boy, Timus. Clever boy. Um, but yeah, uh, and so the whole reason I'm doing this now is because I have just recently got the fifth book in the series, Beasts and Behemoths. So yeah, uh, it's, uh, I figured why not. I think there's going to be a sixth one released. Can't remember what it is, but I'm going to get it because I like these books. They're cute. They're cool. Um, I do recommend, though, if you're going to get any of these, uh, recommended price points about a tenner, I think, maybe a touch less if you can get it in the right places. I recommend starting with Warriors and Weapons. This is your basic player's introduction to what they're expecting to do. So, as you can see in here, in the Young Adventurer's Guide, it's got a chapter about fantasy races. It's got everything there. It's like, oh, from a glance I can tell what characters look like and what I'm to expect which is quite nice. I also like the fact that a lot of these races don't actually appear in the player's handbook. You've got to buy the expansions and all the additions and all the... I'm not even going to get into it. But it's quite nice that the basics are all here and represented. So you've got your humans. It explains, you know, ask you through questions and if you answer yes, you might be a human. It gives you about the age of an approximate human, the approximate size, which they compare everyone to a human. Different attributes, a basic thing and a bit of change and then we skip over and we've got dwarves. So then we've got the size of a dwarf compared to a human. We've got the age, some little backstory, different attributes, questions to ask yourself, you've got elves, and you've got all sorts of little you know, half orcs, and it just gives you an idea, a basic, a very, very basic breakdown of what character you can expect to play as. Now from this you can then look to the DM, GM, whatever you want to call them, and they can help build the character. But this gives you just that introductory to okay so this is this is the idea this is what the character is this is what i'm supposed to be doing in a role play and it gives you the different classes as well so you build your your race and then you've got the class so what class of race are you you know uh, you've got your fighters 
it breaks down exactly what all your abilities would be without going into all the numbers and the details and all the other bits and pieces that go into this you know it, i was about to say bloody game but it's, it's a really good game i love it um Got paladins, got your rangers, and it's just it's breakdowns. Look, animal companions. It's like, oh yes, as a ranger, you might have a companion. And of course, the beauty of Dungeons and Dragons is that dungeons have to be rangers. You can use this and go, oh, I didn't realise we'd have companions. I want to be a paladin with a cat. You can do that. It's the beauty of it. But this, you, I mean, I've just flicked through and I found that, and that's a neat little thing. You try flicking through this thing and trying to find anything about animal companions. I don't think there even is anything about animal companions in this book. I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a lovely little introduction. It's got your gear that you might use, got your armor, got weapons. It's it's lovely. It's bright, it's colorful, but it's so it, it's so cut down and basic that hopefully people will be able to pick it up and understand what Dungeons and Dragons is without all those horrible tables and ifs ands or buts and all that sorts of things and then you can sort of pick up wizards and spells if you fancy being a wizard you've got your cleric bards you're different types of you know magic users so they go into more details ask you okay so do you want to be a druid do you want to be a warlock you know and they've got example characters as well that i flipped through the other one and then you've got different 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 types of spells man spell casting prestidigitation shocking grasp magic missile basically explaining what it is without going into oh you need to be this far away oh you need this to cast a spell oh you must have both hands free oh you can't bear no none of that just okay speak with animals what is it what's it do oh that's cool i might like to try that and then when you get into the game you can actually have those restrictions if you need to it's it's oh polymorph polymorph it's just yeah and it's just stock full of your basic basic magic spells explained in simple language without being bogged down you've got your potions and all sorts and it's and that's amazing that's fantastic so those two work really well together now if you then start looking at maybe dungeon tomes will be the next on my recommended list i think because this gives up a... you know what blow you if you want to lie on the floor and lie on the floor this is sort of the introduction to the adventure this is what to expect once you've created your character and you're comfortable with the basic role playing. So, dungeons are not necessarily dungeons all the time, uh, and they do go in to explain that. Uh, there's a little thing to explain how to start with the adventuring parties and sort of what to expect from the actual thing. And they've got some uh, actual example dungeons, so Iron Slag, okay, a giant fortress. So they go into that and they blow into a quick overview important places break down in the thing and then a spotlight a, a, a potential uh, encounter you get in the foundry so this is very basic very broken down what you might expect to see during an adventure so the next one is the temple of elemental evil shrine of darkness so you got your overview important places get the page right and then an example encounter Fantastic! So th this breaks down what you would expect to see. Oh, Strad, Strad, on an adventure, and you know it, it just it, it gives you a nice idea of what to expect when you actually start adventuring and what you're ex you know looking at when you role play. You've then got your breakdown of your basic monsters, nice and simple. Look, got again the size comparison. You've got your special powers. You've got the things to do when you encounter them, the danger rating, and it's all bright, colourful, easy broken down so that no one's intimidated. It's like, oh my god, I've suddenly come across this giant jelly thing. What's going on? Well, it's there. It's a freaking paragraph. It is literally one, two, three, four, four sentences to explain everything it does without bogging you, the new player, down with all the unnecessary information. So, of course, then once you're then starting to look into running your own campaigns then obviously you're gonna to have to start looking at the actual rules but at the same time you can sort of go oh i want to have a look and see what creatures we might face monsters and creatures so you've got different locations where they might appear dark caverns and dark places and then you've got you know, a carrion crawler there you go it's quite a big beastie but only one thing because it's it's just a giant insect you've got stabby things it's not great anyway but yeah, it's, it, you can start all mind flares, mind flares. That gets complicated, we won't look at that. 
Uh, what else have we got in here? What else have we got? Oh, yeah, forest, mountains, and other terrain. And you've got centaurs. And it's just, yeah, just fantastic. So this is when you start looking at, okay, can I start running my own campaigns? And then you obviously get into Beasts and Behemoths in the last bit. You get little... little Nakarak is actually a demolith, which is just a floating skull bejeweled floating bejeweled skull, not skull bejeweled thing. Anyway, um, but yeah, you've got, you know, it goes all the way up to ogres and even bigger. And you've got a rock. So, you know, it's, it's stock full of things. So this can be helpful in trying to build a campaign for those of you who are not overly worried about going through massive amounts of books. These can be used as a basic role-playing guide as well. I have done in the car even basic role-playing adventures um, without using dice and this is exactly the kind of thing that I would like to use in that situation. I would have these not that no I, I, I've read these and I've got basic ideas down so I've got an idea of who people are going to be playing, what the basic spells might be, what a dungeon or a tomb they might be entering, what monsters they're going to encounter, and what the final boss is going to be. So you sort of just throw it out there. It's like, okay, so this is the scenario, this is the situation, what do you do? They tell me. I have a think. What's going to be the most logical outcome? Throw it at them. And then they just tell me back and forth. And that's no dice involved. So you can introduce Dungeons and Dragons without the numbers and out the rolling of the dice and out all that sort of thing. And I just, I, honestly, the quality, these, these books are quality. They're nice, thick, glossy pages, wonderfully designed. The artwork's amazing. It's broken down wonderfully. It's just, it's a lovely series of books. Introduce you to the world of Dungeons and & Dragons. And like it is, it's a young adventurous guide. It's designed for children to help them get into the game. So for those of you who are looking to show anyone the wonders of Dungeons & Dragons and tabletop role-playing, I, I really recommend that you have a look at these books. Uh, again, look at about a tenner a pop, so maybe not all at once, but definitely worth looking at Warriors and Weapons, possibly Wizards and Spells if you think they'd be interested in magic casting, and then you've got the opportunity to expand the library as and when they feel comfortable too. Um, and then, of course, then you're going to start buying unnecessary amounts of books because ugh, that's just what you do when you're a Dungeons and Dragons nerd, you just start buying lots of books and more books and then it gets expensive and then you're broke and then you curse the day you ever heard the words Dungeons and Dragons. Recently been playing Changeling as well, 